Welcome back. We've learned the true power of Python. And the true power of Python comes from the community. And the fact that there are so many Python developers that we're able to leverage all these modules, all these libraries that people have built to really do really interesting things so that we can fast track our progress and build some really great projects really, really fast. Something that we're definitely going to do in this course. But you may have a question. This PyJokes that I just installed, this library, I mean, it has version 0.5.0. And this is called versioning in Python and in most programming languages, where the first number is usually a version where if you have bug fixes, you would go from 0 to 1 to 2 so that you update. 5 will be a new release, maybe some added features. And the last number, or based on how you look at it, the first number, the major number, is usually breaking changes or major versions. So PyJokes looks like it's fairly young. It's 0 0.5. But something like PyCodeStyle, that is 2.5, looks like a mature library because they're in version 2.5. And here's the thing. Libraries are maintained by people, right? By programmers. We're constantly making mistakes. There's always going to be bugs. There's always going to be things that you can improve upon. So these are always improving. Versions are always increasing. And when you start working on large projects, you start installing different packages, different modules that perhaps only work with certain versions together. So that maybe PyJokes 0.5 is fine, but on a new project, two years from now, I wanna use PyJokes. But the latest version of PyJokes, well, what can I do? In this case, I can uninstall, well, let's say pip3, uninstall the old version of PyJokes. So let's say PyJokes. It may be have a new version of PyJokes that I can install. Now, when I do pip3 install PyJokes, this is going to give me the latest version. Or I could even do double equals and then give it a version like 0 0.4.0. So now if I do pip3 list, I have the older version of PyJokes. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is that sometimes you want for your different projects different versions of a library. Because maybe a project that you started five years ago really requires PyJokes 0.4. And this new project that you're starting requires PyJokes that's, well, let's say upgraded to version two. So how do we do this? Because right now, the way we've installed things, there's only one version on my computer that I can use. This is what we use for what we call virtual environments. And it answers the question of, hey, how can we have two versions of all these packages, of all these modules on the same machine and still have different projects using different versions? Well, there's a tool that you can install called pip-env, which allows you to use pip and also this virtual env to install packages based on each project. So each project has its own packages. Or if you're using PyCharm, which I usually recommend, especially on big projects, you have virtual environments by default. Remember this venv folder? Well, venv folder is a virtual environment created by Python. As a matter of fact, let's say I want to create a new project. Here, I can create a project, let's say v or new jokes project. And here, if in the dropdown, you see that I have a new environment using virtual env. So I can use virtual env, which is built into PyCharm, to create a vi virtual environment. You also see that I have something called pip env, which I mentioned. But usually you select the virtual environment, and when you do create, let's say, this window is fine. When we do create, you'll see that new jokes 
has its own virtual environment. And now any library that I install in here will have its own package right in here. So it doesn't affect any other projects. If I go to pyvenv.cfg, you see that, that the environment is set up with version 3.7. This is my home. And we're able to add packages right in here. And you see that, nope, I don't have any pie jokes in here because this is a new project with a whole new environment. If I create a new file, let's say in here, we'll say a new file and let's call it test test.py. And let's say import pie jokes. We'll say pie jokes dot get joke. What was it? Yeah, let's just copy this. And if I run this, whoop, I get an error. No module named pie jokes because I have an entire virtual environment. It's like a separate universe where I can install here whatever I want so that it doesn't interfere with the outside world. And usually when you're working on project, you want to create them in virtual environments like this. Again, this may not seem like a big problem right now, especially if you haven't worked in the industry, but this, trust me, is a common problem where packages are constantly being updated and you have packages that depend on other packages that need to have certain versions. So a virtual environment to contain all the packages that you use into your project, into this small little environment is really, really important. And as you start working for bigger companies, you'll notice that in your workplace, they're definitely going to be using this system. That's a lot of talking for me. Let's take a break and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.